Hey, how's it going? I know, I know. Crazy hectic, right? Well, sit back and relax and welcome welcome to the Mom and Pop Spot. Help me welcome my dad and the host of the show, St. Patrick. Welcome. Welcome to all the moms, pops, guardians, and guests. Sorry, I got caught off. I caught off guard. Um, this is episode number 21 of the Mom and Pop Spot podcast. Um, so it's actually older than you, Jimmy. Oh. <laughs> just kidding. Hey, just kidding. hey, hey. Yeah. All y'all can kiss my natural. <laughs> there we go. Let's start this right. Yeah, if I mess this one up already. So I did want to welcome back my co-host, Bernice. Welcome back. Yeah. Thanks. I missed you guys. Yeah, we missed you too. And today's guest is a dedicated and determined loving mother of three. Two. Two? Two. Why am I thinking three? Why does you everyone think me? I have three kids? Because I have yeah. three kids. No, but I thought she had three. <laughs> okay, let me reverse that. Let's go back in time. Today's <laughs> guest is of. a dedicated and determined loving mother of two. There we go. You. Yay. Yes. Welcome, Caitlin. Hello. Welcome, Caitlin. Yeah. Yes. Um, so how are you guys both feeling today on a scale of 1 to 10? Mentally, emotionally, physically? Um, all over the place, I think. Yeah. I think earlier I was a little more drained, but now I'm... Starting to relax. Yes. And feel good Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be Friday, but we're Saturday today, right? You know what? Yeah. Screw it. But when we watch this, it'll be right. Sunday. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling? I'm good. Yeah. I was, like, I was a little drained earlier, but I feel yeah. okay now. That's good. I'm better. That's good. Um, so for today's episode, I wanted to go over some tips and tricks we should be giving to our youth, um, to our kids. Um, so we're going to kind of go over some of the stuff, and then we'll kind of talk about it as we go through. Um, but I did want to teach kids self-value. Not self-confidence, but self-value to believe in themselves and have respect and re respect towards others. Do you guys kind of do that within your kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. What is some of the stuff that you guys actually do? You know, I just watch what you say. Like, it's yeah. all about how you say things because yeah. these teenagers can come off very rude sometimes. <clears throat> yeah. That's um, why Jimmy coughed a little bit. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah. Sorry, real quick. Uh -huh. One thing I learned, like, especially being how I look at my size and, yeah. you know, my skin tone or whatever, demeanor. Demeanor is something that's really mm. important. It really is, yeah. Because a lot of times I don't want to come. It, it's kind of hard, especially for me, to come uh, come off like I usually come off as aggressive uh -huh. when I don't try to. Because there will be times I don't know my own strength. Okay. Yeah. You know I mean? Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I feel. I feel like still to this day, after like a few years of being, you know, what I'm saying, kind of humongous, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know how big I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I'll be playing around with somebody, and I like accidentally hit them too hard. Yeah. And you know what I mean? So it's it's the. It's the all the times I felt bad about doing it is what made me help re, like realize, all right, I'm not Patrick size. Yeah, I'm not one. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good that you noticed that though. Yeah. That you that's like I see being so young, you know, you right. got that. Yeah, you've and, already got that recognition, yeah. which is literally right. such a key factor growing up. Like the long, the yeah, the the sooner you realize and have that recognition on yourself and your actions, it's it's gonna make you go miles it'll move you mountains like it's it's so much better for not only you but also the people around you and who you surround yourself with right. and who who knows you may you know brush off onto somebody else when they haven't learned that yet and, and they may be a heck of a lot older than you and it's also um so being big is like i don't say you get picked on the most but people were like i want to see where you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. i want to see what he's capable of yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, one. yeah, it, it's like, I th when I think about it, I think of like a little chihuahua is going to keep barking and barking and barking yeah. and barking. 
Yeah. But if you see like a rock, it, it don't say nothing. It, yeah. it don't bark nothing. Yeah. And that's how I feel. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's just the only thing I learned from, I guess, my parents, because my uh, dad's big and my stepdad is big too. My dad, my stepdad, like six three, six four. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's just one thing I learned and have to keep realizing. Yeah. With my big self. <laughs> yeah. What are so what are you teaching, Caitlin? Um so right now, um, I think because my kids being three and five, um, a lot of it is I'm big on repetition of things. And even right. if, you know, I have felt at times where it's like, I am I going overboard on having them say please or thank you on having them, you know, say little things like that, but at the same time you really can't go overboard on something right. like that because when they're so young, they need that repetition. And as a parent now, I understand more things than what my parents, you know, said to me when I was younger, like, you'll understand when you're older, you'll understand when you're older. And I'm like, God, stop saying that. Yeah. You know, but now that I'm older, now that I have kids, I get it. Like, and it's, it's very important to make sure that your kids have that understanding of those, you know, other people's boundaries right. and, um, you know, kids around them. And like one thing with Reichland, he gets really upset when someone doesn't want to play with him yeah. and he takes it personal. And I'm like, it's not you, you know, at the same time, you have to understand what about when other kids ask you and you tell them, no, yeah. you know, it's the same thing. You have, you feel those same ways, but with him, it's more difficult because he does have behavioral issues uh-huh. like DMDD, anxiety, ADHD combined and such. And it's, He's very all over the place. Um, And what makes it more frustrating is Colt is starting to pick up on a lot of things, Mm -hmm. um, which makes it more difficult. Right. But, you know, it's just continuing to reiterate those small little things, you know, like Reichland is bigger than Colt. So just like what was it, Jimmy? Right. Just like Jimmy was saying, like you have to he doesn't understand you can't do certain things to Colt that you can do to other friends your age or other friends your size. Like it takes that understanding and the continuous, you know, repetition of telling him those little things and, but not telling him in a way where like it makes him feel bad or in a way that belittles him. It's you need to tell him in a way that makes sure that they understand what you're telling them. So yes, sometimes I feel like I'm really dumbing it down because you have to, sometimes kids don't understand the big scheme of things, you know, we also have have boys. Yes, both. Oh my yeah. good, I have all girls. Oh. So I can't even imagine. Yeah. <laughs> How old are they? Three and five. Reichlin will be oh, six in April. Little still, yeah. yeah. Well, that's yes. the thing too is we have to also remember that the fact that they're kids. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. One thing that I it frustrates me is because today's society is we're so quick to reprimand kids for not being ki- or for for them being kids for them being exactly what they are. Like you know they're supposed to behave and like no they're three-year-olds they're three years old there's five years old they're 10 years old like let them be their age like yeah. no three-year-old or five-year-old is going to be perfect you know we're yeah. just, you know i mean i won't lie i i'm not the best mom in the world you know i there's moments there is where no perfect there's mom. exactly right. and i have to agree with you with yeah. especially yeah. with kids like me out there i know i'm bad as hell <laughs> like, i'm being honest like because like, I, I mean i don't do like the thing about me is I give myself credit. Like yeah. I, I don't do drugs and don't don't do none of the extra stuff. Yeah. But you go, yeah. you I don't like doing I'm lazy things. though. So yeah. <laughs> like I'm but, lazy. That's my flaw. So But if you can have laziness, I think all the yeah, issues, teenagers you know? are lazy yeah, though. I would take it. Yeah. I mean, just like those videos you see on Facebook, and it's like these parents that are getting mad at their kids for laying on the couch and they're, you know, playing video games or whatever. Well, do you want them out doing drugs? Do you want them out drinking? Do you want yeah. them out doing something dangerous? Well, no. Yeah. But just like you said, you know, you got to let them be kids. Well, with me, so on a personal basis, um, behavioral issues, like I was talking about with Reichland, I personally do have, you know, some mental um, health stuff that goes on with me. You know, I have ADHD. I'm, um, I'm, you know, I have depression. I have bipolar disorder. So a lot of the things that, um, you know, I see in him, I have. And it makes it easier for me to have that understanding. Right. But it's also difficult because it's I'm still learning myself and I'm yeah. still learning how to understand how to work through these things with me. Um, and like I also have sensory issues with hearing and like loud noises and mm-hmm. they're so loud. And there's times where just the irritation and the repetitive of just them being loud or them doing certain things where it's like they're not doing anything wrong they're not doing anything bad but it's just 
it just gets to you and you yeah. just get, start to get really frustrated. There have been times where I, you know, get on them and then I immediately feel horrible about it because I'm like, oh, what did just, they do? That's you know? the thing of a parent. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. I do have to say, you know, I, I respect you for saying that because the fact that Absolutely. I think what you said was beautifully spoken because you allowed a vulnerable moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's plenty of people like even myself, there's times where I'm just like, um, where I might be in a, you know, a certain moment, whatever the case is. And I see, you know, my kids within, you know, within myself. And a lot of times I tend to think that my kids are, you know, more bad, you know, as because of the fact that they're doing something that they're not mm -hmm. because they're acting out, whatever the case is. A lot of times when they're out, like people are still saying they're good kids. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, right. I think what you said was, you know, was nicely spoken. You know, I really, I really liked it. Yeah, that's um, awesome, Caitlin, that you recognize these things. Right. And, you know, I think a lot of women are scared to like find out like what they're deep issues are and yeah. they're scared to talk about it and it, i love it that you're so open about it because it's such a big deal yeah it really is you know yeah. and it's hard to deal with especially when i recognize the issues and again i'm not gonna lie and I'm, it's not my proudest moments but there's times where i just blow up and then i'm you know i will yell at them and i am immediately and i know this is not good to do it's not good to you know get on your child and then immediately love on them but there's times where i'm like what did i just what did I just do that for? Like yeah. they didn't deserve that. Yeah. Like, yes, maybe they were doing something that you told them not to do, um, you know, several times, but the level I got to was absolutely unacceptable. But see, here's the thing. I have to agree with you. And for the naysayers out there, there's no, you know, there's so much that is going on in our day to day life. You know, in the heat of the moment, it's so quick for us to get on our case, kids, you know, uh, cases because of the fact that like, we snap because of the fact yes. that everything else is going on and we don't know how to ne uh, necessarily um, configure to those situations. So that's the reason why we snap. Right. Nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? It's, it's right. perfectly okay. Now, I mean, there is some extent to where it is wrong when you're, right. you know, causing, you know, harm or whatever the case is or, you know, but it's Which I never do. Yeah. I used to get <laughs> beat down. <laughs> no, but, I used but, to get beat but down. But in all seriousness, it's perfectly okay. To be, we're all human. You know what I mean? We're right. all trying to figure out as we go. And that's the premise of the show. It's like, let's let's lean on each other and figure out, okay, like, there, I might not. Yeah, because there's plenty of times I'm like, man, I'm taking so many different outs. Like, my son's kid, um, my kid's school is reaching out. They're like, they're not doing any good in this school. They're not doing that school. I, go, I take them home and, you know, they're they're going through their issues at home. And I'm like, fuck like as a parent i'm literally taking so many owls like how can i get it i'm seeing all these other parents and they're doing x y and z right. with their kids and i'm like man they're these parents are awesome but don't ever compare yourself no, to other yeah, but exactly. i don't that's when you you like beat yourself down and right. you're like a horrible freaking parent oh, i do this, that all the time this yeah. is this is what i'm gonna say yeah and i'm keep it honest on you know what i'm saying hopefully she don't watch the podcast but um <laughs> my mom kicked me out when i was 15 yeah and i haven't been there since mm -hmm. and one of the hardest things was to realize i mean to be honest she chose my stepdad over me mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i was kicked out i was i haven't been there and i was kicked out 2020 i'm so sorry I haven't been there yeah, since that's a bad feeling to feel so my kids over everyone i don't give a shit who you are so when you're <laughs> so when you're you know what i'm saying in that situation, it's more of a, what did I do? Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you, yeah. it's, it's, I thought it was the whole thing was my fault. Right. And I, I, I never took counseling for it or nothing. But I, um, it was more of a okay. My mindset been, all right. Let me show her what she was missing out on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She yeah. don't know who like who I could have been or what I could have been. And yeah, I have a cool relationship with my mom now just you know what i'm saying it'll but, never be the same exactly and it's like i she ruined that because when i when i go back home i don't ask her to stay at her house i, I go somewhere else like every time like every time you know what i mean so it's like so when i you know what i'm saying walk around i'll be walking around looking upset and people are like oh you don't have a reason to be upset and because da, 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 da. they see my uncle doing well enough they don't know how I'm doing. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. Makes yeah. So yeah. like, and I hate to put this out there, but you know what I'm saying? My girlfriend was in the hospital for a week yeah. because of depression. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I've been there. And it's like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to say I don't know what to do because as a dude, you get told, 
You're not supposed to cry. You're supposed to be tough. That's one of the things I hate the most in this world. Like, stop. Just because you're a man doesn't mean shit. Every fucking person deserves to have a feeling. Every person deserves to feel. And and I and I completely go 100 percent behind that. But at the same time, it's what we're taught when we're young. You know what I mean? Hey man, stop crying. (laughs) Shut up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, Yeah. yeah, that's just I don't know. So let me let me tell you, and this is just me speaking from experience, Jimmy. Um. You don't need, and it's something, the reason why I'm speaking so, like, I feel so passionate with it is because of the fact that, like, I'm still seeking to this very day. I'm seeking validation from people that I don't even need validation from. Right. I think what you're, what you went through and what you continue to go through is, is a blessing in disguise because of the fact that it's making you a better person it's here on now. Stronger. Right. Every single day, you use those, you use those um, negatives and you use them as stepping stones. Right. What what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Right. right. And that's, you turn it I, into something positive. When I'm in the gym, better. when I'm in the gym, I'm thinking about everything shitty that went on during the week. Everything that shitty that went that was shitty in my life, and I'm I'm using that. You know, I can attest because I can use that to say, you know what, I'm gonna be a better person moving forward. Because all those people that counted me out, the people that are not right. giving me a chance when I'm trying to do something positive, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and don't don't let those those barrels, you know, keep you know keep you stuck in the road. Use that to move forward. I have a little yeah. message real quick for somebody yeah. at my school. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we had this basketball coach. Right. And he hate him. I can tell he just doesn't like me. Yeah. But like he didn't really want me like on the team. Why don't you just do something else? Type of person. Yeah. So <laughs> we have an upcoming. Students versus two teachers basketball game. Yeah. And I'm in it. Oh. Oh my oh, gosh. Yes, Y'all baby. do not understand the level of oh my gosh. <laughs> you don't know, Elijah. <laughs> Elijah. I'm gonna drop 60 on this man. <laughs> but it's like it just fuels me. You know what I mean? Right. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like is it's more of I like being that person, that big brother figure to other people. Yeah. Cause I feel like I have enough experience under my belt too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, hey bro, if I were you, just take a like a I'll take a couple months out of school. Cause a lot of people who don't go who go to college don't know what they're going for. Mm-hmm. Like how many people you know that like, went to college and do what they study in? Exactly. And yeah. you know what? I hate that when they you go to college just you can figure it out on the way. You don't have to go in there knowing what you want right. or you have to do this or you have to be that. Like, no. Yeah. Go to college, fill it out, see if it's your thing or not. Who knows? It may not be your thing. I was not a college person. I can yeah. tell I'm I not, not a college not person. I go to college. Yeah. I had, but I will say I had to work my ass off mm-hmm. to get where I'm at today. I was going to say, right. you're going to have that. to be able to understand that. Yes. Yes, you have the choice and you have that right to be able to further your education in that sense, which you don't always need a college you know, degree in order this to be able to be successful. Of, right. I'm a CMA. I went to school for nine months and I have been, you know, kicking ass not to freaking toot my own horn, but where I'm at now, I've been freaking kicking ass and I have worked like crazy hard to get there. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I've to my own horn, but too, yeah. too, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I've worked really hard to get there. And yes, that was school, but it wasn't a college degree. It's a trade school. But even at that, it's like. But it's still considered school. Right. Well, right. You but know, at it that, doesn't matter. Trade school, college, university, whatever. It's school is school. At the end of the day, you're going for something. And mm-hmm. you and once you've done the whole school and you've got your certificate or whatever, you've done school. Yeah. Period. Right. I don't care. What anyone? I, no, I I'm, totally I'm agree just getting my CD. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm just either going to go for trade. I'm good for plumbing. Just or, stick to it, though. Or just whatever do, you're passionate, man. Yeah. Whatever you're I'm passionate. Gonna my, that uh, passion. you gotta find. CD, I'm gonna yeah. do the CDL. Yeah. I'm thinking about just getting my CDL. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a job is only a job when you drag going to it. Like Chili's right now. Oh, that's it's a job. I don't like going there. But if it's like, I feel like. Well, that's, it's, that's it's just, something uh, more. It's something that, more. That when should you, just be an entry level job. Like you should right. focus in on that one. You should focus in. Okay, like once you're at that one, at you know, as you're right now, you're thinking. I can okay, tell restaurants aren't my thing. That's yeah. that's is what I learned from it. Yeah. I do yeah. not like all that restaurant stuff. Yeah. And yeah, no, I feel like a job, a career is a career if you actually enjoy doing it. Exactly. Yeah. So, but um, so the next one that I wanted to talk about is self sufficiency. That one day our kids will have to function to um, on their own in this crazy world. To let them know the opinions of others should reflect on how they are as a person. Peer pressure should be taught is a negative and independence. 
demonstrates confidence. Um, I do want to point out that uh, this is only my opinion. I do not have any licensing for any financial advice, that this is only my opinion and that you do your due diligence uh, for the next tip, which is a, a tax tip. So if you own a business and have kids under 18, you can pay them $12,950 in tax free and deduct it from your taxable income. Your child will owe $0 in taxes and you avoid tax on $12,950. $1,200 or no, $12,950. There you go. Hire your child for marketing materials and invest the first $6,000 in a tax free Roth IRA. Invest $11 a day into an SP 500 index fund. Let compound interest uh, do all the work. And in 30 years, you'll have a million tax free. So teach your kids about tax planning and retirement. Um, have you guys had that conversation? With I mean, I know not you. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait a minute, let me think about this real quick. It's yeah. funny that you say that because I just started. We just started. Yeah, we're kind of late in the game. Like we've yeah. been okay. thinking about a long there. time ago. Yeah. But hey, we were struggling. Yeah, you know, we're st- we're okay now. But still, like, we just started thinking about what about retirement? What yeah. are we gonna do? You know, like we got to. St- I have my four hundred one k going. Yeah, but you know what? I don't think I've ever really. Yeah, you have to go. Top. The next one is sleep and drinking water should be practiced religiously. I mean, we got to make sure that we're doing that because sleep is very beneficial and so is drinking water. Uh, drinking water regulates the temperature of the human body, carries nutrients and oxygen to cells, cushions joints, protects organs and tissues, and removes waste. Uh, and with sleep, good sleep improves your brain performance, mood, and health. Not getting enough quality sleep regularly raises the risk of many diseases and disorders um, these range from heart disease and stroke to obesity and dementia. Um, so before we continue, we're going to take a quick potty break. We'll be right back. I think I don't even know anymore. Um, but kids at times can draw your last nerve. Thinking about that, would you ever put your kid on a leash, or have you ever put your kids on a leash? <laughs> yes, I have. I've never. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing I, wrong with that. Maybe some kids. I need honestly to, feel like I need to with my know? youngest. I can see that with him, yeah. especially like, oh he my god, he's crazy. so wild. Yeah, I love break, him though. He, so we have a fun game at home mm-hmm. where like I'll clean up the house and he fucking destroys it like right <laughs> after. It's a hilarious game him and like, colt are like twins let me yeah. tell you oh man put them together colt's Great. colt's the one that i'm that i did do um it's so it's a leash but it's like literally just this it's this cute like little fox backpack yeah that like um just clips on the front of him and he wears it which you can definitely you know pack whatever little snacks and he likes it yeah but then there's something on the bottom that you can just like clip it to but i mean i don't wear i don't use it going you know to an everyday place it's literally i've only used it for like big event things. When we went to the zoo, when we went to, um, you know, some like a, a holiday event or something, it's never, I'm never using it, you know, where I'm around family or just like a quick little here and there thing. Yeah. It's like a Colt is wild. He doesn't listen all the time. You know, he's three. Yeah. He's not yeah. going to, but he. Just on, when you need to. You right. Use it. Yeah. But on top of that, honestly, like, one of the aiding factors and why I use it is because in those events and such, like you can never be too careful because of how people are nowadays. Like I'd rather know. I'll that... put my kid in a straight jacket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> what I'm saying is I'm like kidnapping kidding. and such. Let me put that out there. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> I do not want someone knocking at my door. Like we need to check your kid. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, it's, 
it's kind of like an additional safety factor too, like in a big sense, because especially if you are at a place with a bunch of people, it's jam packed. Yeah. It's yeah. not just a, I want to make sure my kid's by my side and he doesn't wander off, but it's also a, somebody can't come by and pick oh, up my is, kid and run that off. That is horrible. Right. I see so many videos yes. doing that and that terrifies That's me. what I'm saying. Like you can't, if he's on my wrist, Good fucking luck. Yeah. Like, because it happens everywhere. Yes. Like, yeah. people that are crossing the street, people yep. that are in the mall, like, they're quick. Yeah. They're so quick. And that, that's like another. I love factor. that you pointed that out yeah. because I didn't even think about that. Like, mm -hmm. so now if my kids are on leashes, like, even my oldest, I'm going to be like, this is so that way they don't get taken away. You know what I mean? And if people <laughs> ever want to, like, bash on the fact that you're using it for that reason on an older child, yeah. Fuck you. Because when, I don't care yeah. how old you are, people that. You know, women and men that are our age and even older will get kidnapped. It doesn't yeah. matter yeah. how old. Yes, so younger ones are easier. Younger yeah. ones are, you know, more vulnerable. But it doesn't freaking matter. You yeah. can't sex traffic a baby as well as you can with a teenager. You yeah. know, it's like it's not. It's scary. No one is safe. Yeah. So you can never be too careful, especially this day and age with your child. Like, I don't care. I will go to great extents and great lengths to keep my child safe. You know, yeah. even if yeah. it's. Something that I thought is like, yeah, it's kind of weird, but you know what? I'm going to go with it. Yeah, I'm all for it. Sometimes uh, when I go over, like when we go to like big events and my mom's there, my mom puts me on a leash. I'm like, mom, I'm 38. Like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> all right, Jojo. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I'm like, I can manage on my own. Um, what Golden about cereals? What's your favorite cereal? Cereal? Yeah. Not cereal killer? I'm just kidding. Yeah, cereal killer. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good um, story too, by the way. Let's see. It's an ice cream store. Yeah. <laughs> What about yeah, you? There's so many good cereals. Honestly, like the frosted Wheaties are pretty good. Yeah. They're really good. Like yeah. those are really good. Um, I like the strawberry ones. I like all the bad ones. So tricks, oh, life. Tricks. Oh, like yeah. cinnamon. It has to be cinnamon. Oh, um, the... Apple Jacks. The the um like the blue. chocolate like chip too. chip ahoy or whatever, chocolate chips ahoy. Yeah. Literally like all the bad ones. Yeah. <laughs> or the or, cookie crisp. Or here's... that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah cookie, cookie crisp, crisp or yeah. like the the lucky charms. Pretty pebbles. But Yes. Yeah. Lucky Charms. No, mm -hmm. only marshmallows. Cinnamon toast. And I like making desserts with those. Actually, my my middle one, Emmett, he literally mm -hmm. makes so many different like cakes and stuff like that with the cereals. Yeah. Like, really? I, oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's yeah. Cool. I but just I did. got turned on to honeycomb. Oh, yeah. My daughter turned me on to it. I used to be. Like, what? Yeah. There's snack things like of Fruity Pebble. Uh, oh, they're the called fruit, Fruity Pebble Crisps. Yeah. And it's like a chip of oh, Fruity wow. Pebbles. And then there's like the honey the honeycomb or whatever. It's... um. But like literally snack size pieces, like not Ooh. a cereal size, a snack size. Wow. In the cereal aisle, breakfast aisle, y'all, it's really good. Fries, Walmart has them. Yeah. Spot on. I'm going to try it. <laughs> yes. I did want to point out a fun fact about cereals. And I don't know if you guys know, but did you know cereal boxes are designed to look a certain way? So that way kids are drawn to them. So they'll put the characters are actually facing downward. So that way when the kids are going through the aisle looking for their cereal, all these character faces are looking at them. Like, oh, that's weird. That get me, creepy. get me. Yeah. That's creepy. The other thing too is the colors. That's the reason why the super sugar coated, you know, cereals are all multicolored because mm -hmm. it's like it's standing out. You know what I mean? All the bad cereal are all bland colors. You know, they don't have the toys. You know, so I didn't want to point that out. Interesting. Yeah. You didn't know that. So and those advertisement peeps. Yeah. How they get them? For real. How they get you. Here's a kind of a center I wanted to ask you guys to see how you, how you guys thought about this one. So an old basketball player, um, actually, he was a basketball player here, was somewhat forced to move to California to be with his kids from Arizona. Um, as the ex-spouse moved there because child support there is 30000 a month versus Arizona, which is capped at 2000 Do you believe this is right? And what could be done differently so the kids can get the best opportunity? Wow, I did yeah. not know that. Wait, he was forced to move over there? He wasn't necessarily like forced, but it... Kind of because the fact that she moved over there because she knew that she can get more money if she lived over there and if he lived over there. And it was like, I'm going to live over here if you want to see your kids. So in that aspect, he was kind of forced. because He's like, I mean, I it's have not my kids. it's not right at that sense. But at the same time, how that's not how things work when it comes to having custody. Yeah. So unless it's like if she had full custody and she was able to move for, with them. Yeah. Something happened to where, you know, he didn't have that right or yeah. he didn't have that ability which to me that's kind of a red flag yeah because i mean every case is different we yeah. don't know every situation right but yeah. to me it's like 
yes, he he moved out there to be with his kids, but at the same time, why didn't you have that ability in the first place? See, that's happened. what I think about too, because of the fact that this particular player, I don't want to say the names because I want to get in trouble, but this particular player is a very well known basketball player mm -hmm. and seemed to be, you know, doing really well for himself. So I don't know what the whole situation was where it's like, you know, they were more the custody was relaying on the mother itself. But like you say, right. every case is yeah. different. What yeah. I really think though, when it comes to child support is like, especially in that situation, you think that you want to get more money. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because you, you, you have this brand, you know, big idea of thinking I'm going to move here and I'm going to get more money and child support. Why are you happy about that? Yeah. Why are you so gung ho about that? Do you think that it's because like, once you get that $30,000 check, it's going to be, Ooh, I get this. I get that. I get this. No bitch. You get all of that for your kids. Yeah. Like that's not that's why exact, yeah. it's, I, I swear to God, I really wish that they did a better job at tracking like what child support is used for. I've had, when I worked at Starbucks, I had this chick come through and try using her child support card for Starbucks. Like it was a specific child support. She's like, it's my child support. I'm like, hopefully it works. If not, then I guess I'll use something else. But fingers crossed. I'm like, I wanted to just throw the card back at her. Like, I mean, some states you. are actually making a change. A I hope episodes. so, because it's not fair. Yeah. Like, especially because in this situation, she may be just wanting to get more money out of it for herself, especially yeah. if he's a well-known, you know, whatever out of it. That's really a red flag for me. But to me, like, I want more money. Yes, but it's for my kids. I right. want my kids to have the best freaking life they could possibly have. I had a great life growing up. Yeah, I'm, I'm not struggling right now, but I've been at that point. You know, and yeah. I haven't, I haven't been able to give my kids everything that I want them to have, you yeah. know, but I'm doing everything in my freaking power to do that. That's and all that matters. Yeah. Yep. Right. And yep, I, I don't agree. want more money in child support for myself and to do, you know, oh, now we have money for this. Well, now we have money to make sure that our, you know, that your closets are full, that your pantry is, you know, filled with good food and that, you know, daycare is paid or all your educational expenses are done and you have know all these different everything is for your child and i think there's so many women out there that don't yeah. understand that or even if they do and they don't care why do you deserve to get child support if you're not using it for your damn child why are you fighting so freaking hard i yeah. hope it comes back on you yeah. you know it's not fair uh what about the situation <laughs> nurses in turkey risk their own lives to protect the babies during an earthquake is in turkey oh my god oh my god um, this is so sad i know somewhat of a bad question but would you feel a certain type of way if you know they abandon those babies oh so here's the thing i want you to answer first and then i'll answer you know that's a tough one because you want the, when you're a nurse just because my husband's a nurse and i know he does everything in his power to mm -hmm. to save somebody you know, and I honestly think that's amazing that they're able to just. You see the video; it's it's sad because they're holding on to these, you know, these cribs while the building is shaking, right. and it's like I can't imagine what's going on in their head. Um, I commend them because of the fact that you know yeah. they they stayed there. Well, here's the thing with it: is you take a vow, you take a pledge, you. That's right. You yeah. know, but. It's hard because working in the medical field, like, think of it this way. Okay, so you have a firefighter or you have a police officer, right? right. They take a pledge. They, you know, they, they swear in. They have a duty to serve and to protect. But they willingly put themselves into dangerous situations and dangerous atmospheres knowing that they have the possibility of getting shot. They have a possibility of dying in this fire. They have a possibility of wrecking their car at this high-speed cheese, high, you know, uh, High Do chase. Of, yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't talk. Um, <laughs> but they know what they're doing when they go into it. In the medical field, I'm a CMA. I know what I'm doing. I, you know, I will give my all for it. And the whole reason as to why I'm in the medical field with pediatrics is because one of my best friends, her um, oldest son passed away a week and a half after my youngest was born due to oh. an extremely rare uh, genetic disorder. It's called GM1 gangliosidosis. It affects your spinal cord. It affects your brain activity. Um, wow. Started off as, you know, a normal child rolling over, saying mama, saying dada, holding bottle, and they just stop. Everything oh. just stops. And, you know, he was on That's a feeding so tube. It, it was so horrible. And it was a week and a half after, my, after Colt was born that he passed away. And it's because of him 
that I'm furthering myself in this field. But I can't see myself not doing what the nurses did. But at the same time, it's like I didn't – my my sworn duty is not – to put my life on the line in that sense. Which is true. You know what I mean? Yes. And but it's hard to think of it that way because you can't you can't say that those nurses did a bad or a good thing if they didn't hold on to those, you know, babies. Because we're talking about innocent yeah. kids that have yes. no idea what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you are you know what's going on. And yeah. when you're on shift for that twelve hours, your job is to keep them alive. Yeah. Exactly. So and it's, it's not like you're going to have time yeah. while the earthquake is starting right now to, you know, run mm-hmm. home and get to your kids. What are you going to do in that moment? Exactly. You know? Yeah. And, but I mean, as I think it just goes to show for just any parent in general, asking that question, it doesn't matter if you were a nurse, yeah. if you're standing there and you're just a human and something like you're that's gonna happening, that you're going to, you're going to yeah. do what as you can to save that kid. Yeah. Like, I think that's, that's very commendable, but there's, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I'd blame them or that they would have done any wrongdoing by not doing that. Yeah. But I definitely commend them and give them the utmost props and respect right. for doing that because yeah. they could have went and hid and found safety and shelter for themselves, but they did And even then, I mean, it would still be okay because it's just, it's, it's in that moment. I mean, it's, right. you know. Sometimes, but I'm you know. also going to add, you never know. You can have it fully planned out in your head. Just like any officer in any situation, in, in any freaking moment that you're like, oh, my God, if this ever happens, this is boom, 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 boom. This is exactly what I'm going to do. That moment comes, you can freaking freeze. Yeah. You can yeah, do everything completely true. opposite that you ever thought. You know, I've had a friend um, who had a situation where her niece was choking and her um, her niece's mom, who was her sister, was sitting there at the chair and she's just staring at her. She was she didn't move. She was and shocked. so my friend she, went and, you know, did the Heimlich or whatever, got it got it out of her. But it's like, what are you doing? You know? Yeah. You don't know what you're gonna do until you're in the situation. She froze. Yeah. You know, but it's like you can all you can do is do your best, honestly. Yeah. And when it comes to kids, I mean, we gotta save our future. Yeah. <laughs> Two more and then we'll start wrapping this one up. But um a satanic temple in New Mexico is to open uh, is about to open the world's first religious abortion clinic, which will be offering abortion rituals. How are you guys feeling about this? Wow. I don't think abortions need rituals. Yeah. I think that's. Well, no, I... this this place particularly is going to be doing like they they do abortions, but they're also going to be doing rituals as well. That's what I'm saying. I don't think. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's each their own. I can't really. I don't feel like I can judge on that because like it's not my job to judge another religion or another space kind of thing. Uh huh. As far as abortion goes, I used to be really anti-abortion. Um, like, you know, how could how could you do that? But working in the medical field, growing up and having a better understanding, it's like there's so many other characteristics and more portions into I have to agree. That, you know? I wish that they would stop watering it down and making it seem it's either you're one or the other. Because right. like with yeah. me, like I'm 50-50. I'm pro-choice. Yeah, yeah. I'm pro-choice. There's, like, there's yeah. so many different scenarios out there that yeah. we're not talking about. You know what I, mean? I wouldn't be able to do it personally unless it was a medical like concern. But even then, I'd have difficulty with it. But I have had friends that have been in situations where, you know, they've they've had to contemplate this and they've had to, you know, Accidents happen, dude. You can wear a condom. You can have ID. The only way that you're a hundred percent not going to get pregnant is by not having sex. Yeah, you know. But to each their own. You can't judge somebody for when I will judge you, even though it's not right. I will judge you as if you are a parent bringing a child into this world while you're doing drugs, while you're alcohol, right? You know, while you're doing all these bad things, and you're bringing a child into this world. Why? Yeah, because you can't. You can't. Okay, sure, bring it into the world and adopt. But what kind of life is that child having while you're doing all these things and putting it inside your body while your child's trying to develop? Like, yeah. what are you doing? You know? Yeah. But at the same time, like, like I said, I'm pro choice. I can't, there's so many reasons. Like, you can't just say yes or no, or how dare you, or like to say no, you can't have this abortion because you can afford it, or oh, should have thought about that. Well, I did, but. Things right. happen, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. so it's very much should be pro-choice. I'm, I'm curious to know which religion is backing abortion. Yeah. Like I've never heard of that in my life. What know. abortion is like, or not what abortion, what a religion is like, okay, yeah, let's round them up and get abortions for everybody. <laughs> yeah. 
They're like, I yeah. wonder what like the process on that is though. Like, I and I feel like there's a lot that could go wrong there, especially with how it's going now in America. You said it's in Mexico, New Mexico, New, new Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Oh, New yeah, Mexico. Yeah, the new one, wow. not the old Mexico. The new one. <laughs> the new one. <laughs> the small little one next to us. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy because it's in the U.S. I mean, I can no, that's see what it. I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I can totally I don't... see it out of the country. Is it really but... crazy because it's in the U.S.? <laughs> right. I mean, because of the fact that they're crazy. But now, yeah. what's going to happen with it? I could see so many things going wrong with it. I could see it being beneficial, maybe. Mm -hmm. I just, I can't honestly have an opinion on it without having more. I was stuck when knowledge. I was trying to read it. I was trying to like understand it and everything. Else. Yeah, I would have to have a better understanding on what the background, what the process, what their, what their meaning, and what their what they're getting out of it. Like, yeah. are you just trying to get people's money or are you trying to make it as a joke? Or are you trying to just, you know, step really up against the it, government yeah. or something? Cause like, what's, what's the reason why? Cause are you doing it for the right reasons? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Cause that's, that matters yeah. too. That goes to show, especially when in patient care or whatever, especially yeah. if you're giving abortions, it's, there's so many things that are going to tie into that. Like you have to have medical care, yeah. you know, people. And it's like, Yes, people are, you know, against it and for it and such, but it's like, what in addition are they going to have to have on top of their medical background and what kind of questions are they going to be asked and such to be able to get in and what, yeah. what, what's the wrong answer? Yeah. You know, that's a touchy subject too yeah. Yeah. for everybody. Everybody yes. has different opinions on mm -hmm. all yeah. that. Uh, this one's for you, Caitlin. And even for you, Elijah, a school in UK has banned Valentine's Day after a six-year-old tells his teacher he would plow her into next week. <laughs> what? What are a you guys telling that? Yeah, a six-year-old tells his teacher he would plow her into next week. What are you guys saying to your son if that was <laughs> them? Me, personally, I'd probably start it off as a joke. Yeah. I'm like, well, how do you know about this plow vehicle, yeah, son? Like, what, we're in the what? desert. We don't have snow out here. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Try to flip it. Like what do you mean by that, son? Like, yeah. can, you, I think... can you elaborate a little bit? Mm -hmm. oh, God. Just to make sure he really understood what he right. said first. So first off, I have to say, shame on you to the school for banning, banning Valentine's. a Valentine's Day event, whatever. That's an international holiday. You can never get rid of Valentine's Day. It's a day of love. On top of that, for a, what, he's in kindergarten? Sixth grade. Um, yeah, oh, sixth so. grade? Six uh, no, I'm sorry. Six years old. Six years old. I'm sorry. Oh, Six I said that's like first. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, scratch that. You might know what plowing yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. reverse. And the way that we are, I mean, it might have, you know, some of the teachers might have been plowing. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just that probably like, came from his dad, honestly. But, Maybe, I mean, yeah. to be to be real, like, God forbid, this these parents could have had zero knowledge. But, like, Reichlin has watched, like, I won't let him watch YouTube because he likes to watch like, you know, the kids on there playing whatever little stuff that they play. But there's right. so many bad videos out there that like portray everything kid related and everything kid. Yeah, fun. And, add their ad -libs and, and yes, secret subliminal and it's stuff. yes. And like, yeah. um, what is it? It's potty time is a is a movie from like when we were kids and stuff. And so Reichlin was watching that when he was potty training like a, year, a couple years ago, years ago. And like um he was just watching his tablet my mom was in the bathroom with him because i was at work or whatever um and she said it started like he got a really weird look on his face and then the music started changing and so my mom like took it out of his hands and then it turned into the toilet started like had like an angry weird face and it was like let me get that pee pee no 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 oh my god and then Did this freak him out yeah, well he <laughs> freaks me mom, out i know <laughs> my mom took it from him before he was able to watch it because yeah. she saw she recognized like something's off here you know but then watch that and then it turns into um that's crazy i know yeah. and then it turns into this like uh you know those like joke videos and stuff where it's like oh someone makes you watch it and then it ends in some person screaming or something like yeah. out of nowhere well it was like that one of this dude that's sitting in an office chair and his mouth's wide open and it's like coming out from his mouth and going, ah, like screaming oh, yeah. and that's where it goes into it i'm like so so like everything was normal and it goes up into this like seven eight nine ten minutes in or whatever so that way it's like parents aren't paying attention to what they're watching at that point yeah. and they yeah. put it in at those points but it's like 
they are not freaking safe. So what if God forbid it was a video like that, that this child just so happened to see. And sometimes kids just freaking pick up on stuff. Oh, they do. I mean, I say sometimes, but it's, it's constant. They hear everything. They take everything that they hear. And it's like, some, you know, sometimes I'm like, ah, damn it. And all of a sudden Colt go, damn it. And I'm like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. We, that's a, sorry, mom, we shouldn't have said that. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. it's unintentional, but at that point you can't, you can't ban a whole day because of a six year saying Especially, something like I that. Mean, they could have explained to the child, like this is, I mean, I don't, again, I don't know the situation. Right. But the fact and they're that they six. Really, yeah. They're six years old. Well, like. you Just like you said, like you would have to kind of joke around about it, like what were you thinking and then you yeah. have to kind of make a joke out of it because you come down on a child that's six years old and something in regards to something like that i i don't honestly feel that someone that's that age would even understand what that right. means yeah. so how can you reprimand them for something that they probably just heard thinking oh she's she'll really like this i think she'll really think it's yeah. cute you yeah. know like but they they have no idea, yeah. you know, yeah. they don't understand the extent of what that means yeah. to take that whole day away for everybody just because of that one situation, I think is preposterous. And yeah. I feel really should bad. Just not come to school that day. You know, yeah, I just, I think they did too much. That's, yeah. that's yeah. beyond overreacting. Like it's, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. A si- like I said, sixth grade, is different. different yeah at six that point old, people no. are losing their virginity by sixth grade sometimes which is just beyond freaking me and i don't I even know. understand but <laughs> i'm just saying like it's my best friend lost his in seventh Ooh. yeah it's about the age that mm-hmm. middle That's school age no ugh, no school age knock it off creepy age. listen let's knock it off my kid's in kindergarten and i'm already <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> someone made a joke to me one time when i was pregnant with my kid <laughs> or when he was like a newborn about hard socks. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> like, don't do time, that. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to know. Oh. You know what that means. It's now time for the no, the O, oh, and the laugh. It's where this and every show we give out a random hack, fun fact, or message and joke. Uh, little ones uh, giving you problems while trying to complete chores or tasks. Well, turn them into games. For sweeping, get some blue tape and outline a big square on the floor and have your child sweep everything into that box. Or for picking up around the house, set a timer, play some music style, or play some music and have a musical chairs-esque type of game. Uh, They'll rush to clean everything up. Um, And the joke. um, Sundays are always sad, but the day before that is even a Saturday. Oh my God. You get it? I got that one. Yeah. yeah. I had other ones and I'm like, ah, I don't know if they're appropriate. Uh, so I was like, ah, this, one's, this one's pretty kid friendly. But as we wrap up the show, I want to give a huge shout out to, to my co-host, Bernice. Thank you. Queen. Yes. And a huge shout out to today's special guest, Caitlin. Yes, Caitlin. Yes. Thank you. Uh, where can they follow you at? Oh, shoot. Um, or is there anything you want to plug? Um, I have, to. I have like an Instagram. Stuff. It's I think yeah. it's dot ten t e n dot f o u r underscore mama. Okay. Um. So ten four mama. Um. Or it might be the number four. One of the two. I don't remember. Look it up. Caitlin M. Finger, first and last name. It's really hard to to miss. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I had fun. Do you have fun? Oh yeah. Do you fun. have fun? Yes. Yeah, I like this one. Um, and as always, Mr. Habari live himself, Mr. Dip, and Elijah Wealth for Generations Lee. Yeah, Thank you. Elijah. Shout out to Jimmy. Shout, yeah, shout, shout out, out, to, out Jimmy. to Jimmy. Yeah, I can't, right. I can't forget Jimmy. Mr. 17. Yes. Please like and follow. Seven foot two inches, 17 right. years old. <laughs> too tiny. Yeah. Please like and follow Habari Live podcast, Habari Entertainment, and check out other shows on there like Habari Live, The Von Rebel Show, Socially Awkward and Uncomfortable. Wealth for Generations. Elijah, help me with some other shows. Uh, we have XL Dreamcatcher. And uh, the new one, I believe, is Flow from Locals Only. Please, actually, I want to thank everybody that's watching. Um, how many people are watching? Is there um, still one person watching? Me. Okay. Yeah, so we got the one <laughs> thank person you, watching. Yeah, thank, thank you, Elijah. <laughs> it's not about the live. It's about yeah. the general view. Yeah. Right? It's not about the live. Please also check out One Love on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. 
Stay safe out there. Stay hydrated. Make it a great day. And we're out. Peace out. Bye.